Hi, thanks for joining us for this training webinar coordinated by the Florida Water Resources Monitoring Council. I am Dan Doherty with the Balmoral Group and I serve as chairperson for the Water Council. Please let me know if you have any questions on the Florida Water Resources Monitoring Council or if you have suggestions on future water related training opportunities. This training on systems for managing continuous monitoring data was put together by Darlene Belez with the Suwannee River Water Management District. And with that, I will turn it over to her. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. If not, send something through so that they can let me know and I'll speak up or figure out a better way to get you to hear me. Um, so most of this is we did a survey um, to all of the um members of the council all the organization members and they forwarded it on to the people who were um kind of managing their big data sets and actually using the system so the survey results came back from the people actually using the programs um and this is kind of to give an overview off of what i found online from the systems that were reported as being used as well as kind of user feedback on what works, what doesn't work um, from the actual users of these systems. Uh, so the survey was sent out to eight agencies that responded to my um, original like email requesting um, for the agencies or organizations using big data based management systems. I received five responses from those eight agencies um they kind of consolidated it um into one response per agency so that actually wasn't too bad a response for a survey and i fully admit to being bad at nagging for responses on this one with other stuff that was going on for me um there were six main database systems that are kind of currently in use or in the process of being transitioned to um, by these agencies and some actually used some use only one while others have multiple database systems that interact with each other because um, they each kind of fill a different role for them. So the database management systems um, that were listed was Hydra, uh, Whiskey, and Chi WQM, uh, which is actually a module used with the, um, all three of those are Kister programs and they kind of interact with each other. Um, some had combinations and some had just the individual one. Um, if you see the little um, building icons next to that, that's how many agencies responded saying that they were using or transitioning to. Uh, the Whiskey and uh, Chi WQM uh, were both in transition process. So when we get further along, uh, the respondents didn't really have a uh, answer for some of the questions because they haven't used it yet. Um, Aquarius uh, was kind of the main competitor uh, for the Kisters. Uh, that is an aquatic information system. Uh, and then there's an Oracle based and contracted out um, ones. And those are a little more flexible. So um, just kind of giving an overview of each of the products right now, plus the pros and cons from the people. Uh, Hydra is an off-the-shelf time series data management system. It's been around since 1987. Uh, so it's been around for quite a while for as far as big data management is concerned. Uh, it uses a file storage system that is optimized for compression and querying. Um, it was kind of developed as a for hydrologic data, um, but has since added several modules and analytical tools to kind of uh, spread out as technology has advanced over time. Um, and those are kind of listed there with their shorthand for it. Um, they have time series data management, mapping interface, a modeling tool, a water quality data management that kind of helps bring in some of the grab sample data um, along with the continuous data, uh, groundwater bore management, a task server, and a web porter, portal option. Um, at the bottom of each of the screens of the first page for um, the things is uh, where you can get more information. Uh, this is where what I was able to get off of the internet. And then from the actual users, the types of data uh, data that are 
uh, being used using the Hydestore product right now are continuous and grab water quality, continuous and manual groundwater and surface water levels, continuous and manual surface water velocity and discharge measurements, rainfall data, ag water use data. Uh, ways that our users have been importing the data are manual um, imports, direct import via telemetry, um, website stripping and importing those data in from open source websites, and FTP file imports. Uh, the QA and editing ability from the user standpoint, um, they can easily make several types of data shifts and offsets. Um, it's, each parameter is edited and commented on individually. Um, and so that's kind of more useful for the like hydro, hydrologic data where you're looking at one parameter at a time. Um, it only keeps the final data. It does not keep a copy of the raw data and, and the audit um, process of keeping track of who made what changes. It's very limited in keeping track of that. Um, it does have graphical editing abilities instead of in tables. Uh, as far as analytical and viewing tools, um, it's kind of an ongoing process for them, but there's graphing, Piper diagrams, rating curves uh, that can all be calculated in the program. Uh, the analytical tools can be ran in batches on large station lists. Um, they have the ability to do email alerts. And then looking at the uh, pros, these are from the users. Uh, Hydstra handles large data sets well. Um, the ability for batch processing analytics are very useful. The email alerts are useful. Uh, graphical editing um, versus table format. Uh, standard upload file format um, instead of it kind of standardizes it, makes it easier to upload data. Option of approved and provisional data sets um, by having a different file format um, and QA processes. Uh, handles hydrologic data really well. Water quality uh, with many parameters are a little more difficult to deal with, uh, unless you, but it's good for using it as an archive location for water quality data. Uh, superb customer support and help files. That was uh, commented on several times. They're very responsive um, and do a good job of responding quickly to problems that you may have. Uh, the cons with Hydstra, there's a big learning curve. Um, it's difficult to understand the um, that any file structure options that are available unless you are a programmer. Um, not able to edit or comment on sample level, level um, only on the parameter level. So looking at one parameter at a time, uh, which gets a little harder when you're trying to just make a comment about a sample level for the water quality. That's why it's not as useful for that. Um, the metadata are not well managed, if at all, in the um, Hydstra product. You can do some as far as like station information, but like any lab metadata um, is not managed in the system. Um, some features work, um, but are clunky because um, it's based off of the programmer's ability uh, to do it. So you can make it work, but it's not necessarily the smoothest transition. Um, it's not set up as a relational database, uh, so you can get orphan data station data and stations in your database. Um, it can be hard to manage the stations. Uh, you have to add it kind of at multiple um, places for one station instead of going to one place to add it. Uh, large company base, uh, this is a large company, Kisters, uh, based in Australia, so it's really hard to get on-site help, even though they're really responsive. Um, through email and phone calls. Uh, the data structure is set up uh, in a block structure, um, which is good for appending data, but it's hard to insert, insert past data into the data set. Uh, so if you have data coming from multiple sources uh, that you want going into the same place, um, it may not write in if, the, if one of the other ones has a later date than what you're trying to import in or any historical data that you're trying to add in that you may find after the fact um, can be hard to get in. You have to do some extra manipulating to get make that happen. 
Uh, and then some general comments that were made that aren't necessarily good or bad, kind of depends on your um, your reference. Uh, the KISTER staff can be contracted to write programs for specific tasks to make it more customizable. Uh, so if you don't have the programming ability in-house, um, you can hire the KISTER staff to do it for you. Um, from my personal experience, because we have this at uh, our district, um, is they're pretty good that if you tell them like what you want and what you're looking for and give them an example of the process of uh, getting that done quickly, um, sometimes much more quickly than what our programmers can do in-house. Um, it can be expensive, especially if you're having if you're contracting them to write the programs as well. Um, although um, not that far off of the newer big data systems that we'll can, um, be talking about later. Um, it was hard to find actual quotes of um, costs, or I would have included those, but uh, they really like to talk to you in person. So. Uh, yeah, so I didn't feel like going through the process of talking to all the uh, vendors uh, and getting the big sales pitch to come up with numbers for you. And it really depends on what kind of modules and stuff you want added to the system as well. Um, this It was set up, um, set up process um, can be on an order of weeks, um, depending on kind of how complicated your network is. Um, but for stations, and because it doesn't have to deal with that metadata portion, it can be set up kind of more quickly um, than some of the other systems we'll talk about, um, because it really just bringing in the station information and the data itself. Um, it was a pretty smooth process. The KISTER staff um, tends to help out really well with that. Um, and this is one of the programs that has been used by uh, agencies for decades. It's been around for quite a long time. Uh, so they're kind of um, been there and can really know what they're talking about when they're talking to you about this stuff. Um, moving on to the with their whiskey product. This is another Kister's product. Um, this is the off the shelf um, comprehensive relational database. So this this has uh, the ability to handle the metadata portion as well as the data itself. Um, it's based on SQL and Oracle. Um, it allows for data acquisition, storage, validation, analysis, uh, reporting, and collaboration with other agencies. And it's easy to share data. It has an unlimited store capacity for unlimited number of parameters. Um, that's what helps with the metadata um, option. It has a graphical user interface, uh, GIS mapping tools, validation and notifications from user-defined rules. So you can set kind of, if it goes outside of these realms, you know, flag it and let me know. Um, and the Whiskey um, has the audit tracking. Um, so it keeps the raw data and then kind of tracks who made what changes um, as you edit and modify your data. Uh, and you can keep track of why that's being done as well in the Whiskey program. Uh, it standardizes and automates routine steps in water data management. You can automate uh, kind of predefined reports as well. Uh, the link is on the bottom of the page to be able to get to um, any more information if you want like the technical side of things or finding the vendor. Um, and then from the actual users, the types of data that are being used in this product, um, remember this is one of the ones that are kind of in the process of um, being put in. Uh, so they, these are kind of the wish lists or what they're expecting to get through. Um, the grab water quality samples, those discrete samples, the lab metadata, uh, field data that are collected, uh, radar and gauge rainfall, atmospheric data, groundwater and surface water levels discharge, and meteorological data. Uh, the ways that they know that they are hoping to import the data, uh, manual, uh, direct through telemetry, and they also have a web service importer uh, that I wasn't able to find too much about online, um, but it's a web, I think it's a being able to strip from open source websites um, and import the data through there. Um, instead of having to do it by code. 
um, the QA and editing ability. Um, the good thing about this one, as far as water quality is concerned, uh, so this is kind of their water quality version of Hypestra, um, is you can edit multiple time series at once. So you can do that sample level edit or comments where you can say like, on this date and time, the sample that was taken at this date and time, all of these parameters have the same uh, comment has graphical editing as well. Uh, there's no block structure on this, so you can easily insert past data um, where the Hydra version, like you, it was really hard to get it back in there. Uh, as far as analytical and viewing tools, um, they have a web portal platform, uh, mapping functions, you can calculate percentiles, loadings, and other user-defined formulas you can, you can add in there to have analytical tools. The pros from our users. Um, this is again what their expert their expectations are, kind of moving forward from uh, where they're at in the process of going on. So expecting they expect the same superb customer service uh, provided for the Hydra product. Um, they've had that so far. Uh, the standard upload format um, and web service importers are nice, able to edit multiple time series at once. Uh, it's configured to handle them. It can be configured to handle all the metadata associated with the data. It's a hierarchical system, um, which limits those orphan uh, data or stations or data points um, in that data structure. It's great um, with some of the additional functions that they have with the graphics, the mapping interface. Um, they're really hoping to be able to do their radar rainfall integration through that. Um, to make it easier to validate the data coming through with that. Uh, you can also manage ecological data, biological data, um, some of those other data sources that are um, kind of harder to deal with in time series format. Some of the cons that they've come across so far, um, you're limited to four data columns for each data point. Um, you have with the time series data, if you want to use that with Whiskey, you have to find a structure for that. You have to fit that time series data into a different structure. Um, it may be difficult to set up if you have a lot of variability in your data source and resolution. Um, and so that's part of um, the setup process. You really uh, need to find and like know what, how your data is set up and what your resolution and, and data sources are. Um, and they're in the process of finding out more cons. Uh, so far, it seems much better than what they were using before, um, but they're still kind of in that honeymoon phase where they, they get a taste of it, they can kind of see it happening. They see the light at the end of the tunnel of it getting brought in, um, but they're still in that honeymoon phase. They haven't really gotten down and digging in and finding that extra uh, things they would like coming up with their new wish list. Um, some of the general comments, um, like I kind of just mentioned, it was critical to understand the data structure when transitioning to the new system, and it kind of makes a big difference in how smooth the process goes is how well you know your data. Um, and for their setup, it was on the order of months to a year, um, kind of depending on how clean your data set are, um, how well you know it, and the volume of data that you're trying to, um, uh, data and metadata that you're trying to bring in. And the months to a year really is kind of dealing with that metadata portion of it. Uh, so the Chi WQM, so that's the water quality module. Um, and this one that we're talking about is, is connected with the Whiskey product, but the Hystra version also has a module with it. I kind of pulled it out separately because it was uh, new to me. And so I was trying to figure out what the difference between this module is versus the Whiskey product. Um, so the water quality module can be integrated with both the Hydra. There's a module available for both the Hydra and the Whiskey product. Um, and it's designed specifically to manage, analyze, and report water quality, ecological, and air water quality data, and keep track of the metadata as well. Uh, this module seemed to have a lot more of the like automatic QA processes and um, analytical side of things, um, including doing percentiles and long-term statistics. Uh, they even mentioned on their website having an ionization balancing uh, verification. Um, if you do water quality 
Um, that's one of the ways that you, you check those ions and cations and see if they balance out right to kind of QA and verify that your data makes sense. Um, allows the ability to couple various data sources and types to be viewed together in one platform. So it's kind of, this module seems to be kind of the go-between of um, getting those time series data and the grab sample data kind of all together in the same place so that you can look at them together um, easier than trying to make one fit into the other. Uh, so the features um, that kind of stood out was they have a new batch import framework um, that's much more flexible than before. And this allows the, you to import kind of bulk data uh, into the data structure without a lot of manipulating the data beforehand. Um, the links are below for both the Whiskey module and the Heidster module, if you want to find out more information about this. Um, so again, like this is uh, kind of in the process of being um, transitioned into, and so there's not a lot of information as far as actual how we're, it's being used, but they, um, the types of data are similar to the Whiskey, uh, the grab water quality samples, levels, um, kind of the, the non-time series data. Uh, ways of importing data, um, they're kind of in the process of building an import um, process to handle the current and expected needs for um, loading both internal and cooperative collection data. Um, so they're kind of optimistic that it'll be better than the manual process that they were doing. For QA and editing ability, they're not really sure. Um, they're going to process, they're going to test it um, once they get enough data kind of transferred into the system, so they haven't gotten that in yet. And then as far as analytical and viewing tools, um, they kind of know that they can, they should be able to do routine statistical verification, um, graphical and geographical viewing of the data. Uh, the pro so far, um, Kind of similar to the Whiskey pros of functionality, editing, graphics, and mapping features, it integrates with other Kister products. So if you're looking for kind of um, a go-between, uh, this seems to be like one of the modules that um, would work for that. Some of the cons that they've found so far, uh, some of the areas of structure are kind of rigid, and so you may have uh, may cause difficulty with agencies that have long data records have uh, variability, so you collected your data differently over time. Um, and so if you don't have that consistency over time, it may be a lot harder to kind of get your data into the structure uh, of this module. Um, and for this one, they're still kind of in the process and they're in the engagement phase. I'm gonna use the same analogy. Um, and so they're not, they're not implemented yet. They don't have their data in yet. So they haven't really gotten married to this product yet. They're just kind of in the engagement phase and kind of looking forward to the future of getting it up and running and being able to kind of get in there and play with it more to find out what it can do. Um, they're estimating kind of a similar uh, months to a year to be able to do this setup process. Um, and then moving on to Aquarius. Uh, this is Aquatic Informatics product. Um, there is an old version of Aquarius uh, that dealt mostly with time series data and, and the new version also includes ecological, so like the sediment, biological, and vertical, and allowing for also vertical profiles, uh, as well as grab samples and field water quality data. Um, the new version has several options, so you have the, the standard kind of time series that the old version had, um, it's good for the continuous data management. Uh, they have a sample, what they call samples, which is the environmental lab and field data, sample data and metadata management. Uh, the web portal um, to be able to help deliver real-time access to stakeholders. Cloud, uh, so it's a software as a service where Aquarius hosts your data for you um, in a cloud server. They also have um, water tracks and Linko, which is more mm -hmm. of a good for compliance uh, for wastewater and drinking water um, for municipalities. Um, they didn't go too far into that. It's a very specialized thing. So if you're interested in that, um, I'd suggest kind of looking at uh, talking to the vendor to find out more about that. 
Uh, there's also the link below for finding out more information. Um, for the users of Aquarius, um, they're just really using it mostly for continuous water quality data and field data to kind of look at it in the same place. Um, ways that they've been importing data is direct via telemetry, manual uploads, uh, import from internal databases. Uh, there's kind of two things, the uh, data acquisition system, AQDAS, and their Aquarius Connect product that Aquarius has. Um, QA and editing ability, they have uh, an option for an automatic correction based off of USGS methods. They developed it for USGS, um, and that's available. You have to follow um, the methods to a T for uh, that to be able to work. Um, but And then they have the graphical editing as well. For analytical and viewing tools, they do have a web portal option um, and then kind of the graphing and kind of the more standard um, analysis as well. So the pros so far of Aquarius that our users have found, uh, customer service was responsive and helped with migration, uh, the ability to track who made what edits and why, so they have that auditing tracker, um, keeps copy of the raw data to easily revert back to the raw data if needed, if you make an edit that you um, don't want. Uh, options for automatic correction based on the USGS me methods, I mentioned that previously. Um, it has a good qualifier system. You can add multiple qualifiers to the data. Um, the Hydra system, you, you only really had one quality con number that you had to um, identify. This one allows you to have multiple ones. Um, so it's better for like the water quality data where you can have multiple um, QA codes for it for one data point. Uh, everything associated with the continuous uh, water quality can be in one location. So your field visits, your um, kind of checks and balances that you have um, that you want to look at, to, all the data you want to look at together for continuous water quality, um, it's kind of all in the same place. Uh, it's not Hydra. <laughs> They're very excited. It's not Hydra. It's much more to it, intuitive and user friendly uh, compared to Hydra. You don't have to be a programmer to be able to figure it out. Um, so the kind of beginning is not as, as tough to get started when you're coming in learning the program. Uh, and the web portal um, allows for attractive and accessible communications about the data. Uh, customer service, uh, for the cons, customer service was not as knowledgeable about how to uh, parameterize the system for uh, water quality. Um, and so they were, they were a little frustrated that um, they, they weren't as knowledgeable um, about the water quality side as they were about the hydrology side. Uh, they didn't feel that the paid training was not helpful at all. Um, many of the features advertised uh, did not function as expected. Um, so a lot of that was, um, you know, trying to control like expectations uh, from the vendor. So what they say, you might want to ask extra questions. Uh, automatic corrections cannot be viewed um, before applying. So I thought that was interesting. It's hard uh, to. So you have to actually apply the correction to be able to see it, and then it's hard to remove the corrections after applying it. So um, you kind of have to hope that it works out the first time or you, you have extra work to do. Uh, the calibration drift checks, um, the USGS auto correction things don't work unless you calibrate and verify in the field. So using that um, direct, like the, same method that USGS used, they verify and calibrate in the field instead of in the lab. So they have the same time. Um, so to do the, um, the, those automatic drift calculations uh, really aren't helpful unless you're following the USGS uh, protocols to a T. Uh, and the web portal requires a lot more of that technical and coding skills to get a lot out of it. Um, and they were, uh, they were working on a glitch, or I don't know if it was a glitch or it wasn't set up, um, to be able to use that for an external facing website versus just a web portal that you can use internally. 
Hey, General hey Darlene, Thomas. this this is Dan. Yes. Um, we we had a comment from one of the participants that um, they mentioned that Whiskey also has a web portal. Do you know if anything about that one, or do you know if that one allows you to have an external facing website? I don't know. I didn't. Um, As so, said, responded that it. Perhaps does. somebody else does, but yeah, I didn't see it on the website, and it wasn't mentioned on the survey. Okay, it looks. It looks like it does. Um, if anyone yes, knows it, more about that, please. It does. Uh, it please. does. This is Margaret Kroll from the Southwest Florida Water Management District. It it does have an external. It can be configured to have an external web portal as well, which is what we're planning on doing. We're going to have actually two versions, an internal version where we make all of the data that we acquire, including contractor and cooperative uh, data available to our internal users. And then we're going to have basically a, a replicated version that is going to have uh, I would say a lower temporal resolution of data and also only district data available for our external users. So that's what we're working with right now. Okay, um, good to know. Um, thanks. Sure, thanks. I just wanted to mention, hi, this is Asmita from the Southwest Florida Water Management District, that they have an inbuilt function to get the USGS data into the system, so it seamlessly integrates with Envis. So okay. if you wanted to bring USGS data into your database, it's it's just a simple uh, already developed system. Okay. Oh, awesome. Great, hey, thanks. Great, yes, I am definitely not the expert on all these. I really only know Hystra. <laughs> so please, like anything that I miss, please let other people know. Um, I think it was on the kind of general comments for Aquarius. Um, there was somebody who had the old version and it took about six weeks um, plus a little bit of IT work um, to get it up and running. Um, and then the newer version, uh, the agency that's switching over to that recently uh, took a lot longer than they were expected. Um, and a lot of that had to do with, uh, it wasn't really meeting what their expectations were to begin with. So their IT um, was, help, was needed to kind of support it and get it up and running the way that they wanted it to be working. Um, and that took about four months to get it set up, uh, then plus additional IT work to get it running the way they wanted to. And that took over a year to really get it functional for them. Um, the Aquarius Connect product um, requires specific server versions. Um, I don't know if they knew that before they got it, but that was um, mentioned on um, why they haven't used it yet. Uh, there's a new beta version of a data correction tool that's very user friendly, but it's not quite functional yet. So they're kind of still in development phase of some of this. Um, if the data in time series needs to be completely overwritten, um, there's kind of a long drawn out process to be able to do it using this Aquarius uh, API um, and JSON programming to be able to get that going. Um, so this is a relatively new product uh, that's kind of still uh, kind of constantly making improvements. Um, it was built originally for hydrology and not water quality, so their focus right now is not necessarily on developing improvements or enhancements for the water quality side. Um, and I think that was one of those expectations that they had that um, kind of didn't come to fruition for the Aquarius update that they got. Um, for Oracle Base, so this is kind of uh, tend to be like the old historic databases tend to be based on the Oracle system. Um, when I went to their website, um, they showed that they provide over uh, 2,000 software as a service, so that SAS applications that can be customized for your organization um, for traditional and new data sets on a cloud platform. Uh, they have uh, the for the data integration, real-time streaming, batch data processing. Um, and then, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but a lot of these Apache things are specific software programs that kind of work with the Oracle-based stuff. So um, Apache Kafka, if I'm saying that right, clusters. Um, data management side, the has autonomous data warehouse that scales elastically. So as you're, you add more data, it kind of increases. You don't have to worry about running out of 
space as a fast query performance. Um, and then again, the Apache software, uh, Hadoop and Spark um, is kind of like used with that management system. Uh, data analytics include graphical, spatial, and processing workloads um, in that Apache system and NoSQL. Uh, I haven't, I'm not familiar with that either. I don't know if anyone else is. Um, the data science cloud for collaboration and data sharing makes it a lot easier to share data amongst collaborators. It also has an R interface now. Uh, there's more information um, at that link at the bottom of the page. The types of data, again, I said these were kind of the older um, databases um, that people were mentioning, like they, that wouldn't fit in anything else. They kind of put in the Oracle database. So grab water quality samples, lab metadata, field data, radar and gauge rainfall, atmospheric data, biological data, uh, surface and groundwater levels, and discharge. Um, some of the ways of importing data, again, manual, direct via telemetry, M4 from other agencies' websites, and a lot of that to import it in used a lot of R and SAS scripts. For QA and editing ability, it really kind of de depended on how it was developed because it's um, with all the different options uh, and your depends on your programming ability. Um, it's table editing, not graphical. Um, some of that is possible. And then if it's really if it's transferring to other data, like if you're using it to transfer it into other database systems, there's really uh, no way to go back and edit it after it's been transferred over. It doesn't like fix it in both places. You have to import it in and fix it and then export it back out. Um, and then the analytical viewing tools, they have some summary statistics, root and Mary graphics, um, but not really anything. Uh, super or high tech. You can run those R and SAS scripts um, off of the data if you want, though. So the pros, um, it's highly customizable depending on SAS skill set um, with programming and time spent kind of developing the systems. Uh, provides a standard viewing of the data and metadata for everyone, so everyone sees it the same way. Uh, the data is pretty well organized and it interacts with uh, several software options. The cons, um, it's kind of a huge undertaking to develop it. Um, it involves uh, multiple bureaus. Uh, staff turnover can make, can cause issues with the focus of kind of what you want the end product to be when you're setting up these Oracle-based databases. Um, the long process makes it hard to achieve kind of the full vision of capabilities before deeming it good enough because it's functional and you want to move on. Um, it uses some complicated scripts to process, import, export data, which is hard to maintain over time. Um, and it really seems like this Oracle-based, um, apart from the cloud option, is becoming outdated. It's expensive. It's not easily configurable. Um, editing is very limited, if at all. Um, and it's not intuitive to set up for a non-techie person. Uh, some of the general comments. Um, setup takes in the order of years because you're kind of taking all the pieces and kind of putting it together for yourself. Um, uh, and then like a programmer or a highly technical person is, is really useful to, to get that full use out of what's possible out of the Oracle-based system um, versus just kind of using it as a place to hold all your various tables of data. Um, so contracted database services. So this is really, you make, you hire somebody to make a database tool um, or you just contract out the work. So it's kind of uh, soup to nuts or uh, you just have them develop a tool. It's made to your specifications. Um, so you have to know what you want um, and you have to have the budget to be able to support it. Um, it can involve a lot of negotiations on whether it's, the time and energy it takes to develop it is worth the tool um, that you get from it in the database services. Um, and you really need to think when you're contracting out database services, you really need to think about the long-term um, kind of post-development support of the system. Like, are you going to continue to like keep a contract um, with the developer um, to be able to support any changes you want to make in the future? Uh, types of data um, that our users have 
uh, in these contracted database, uh, grab water quality data, lab metadata, um, and pretty much anything you're willing to pay for um, getting done. Uh, ways of importing the data, manual, um, and run script on a schedule, scheduler. Um, QA and editing ability, contractors provide uh, QA, um, or your staff can do it, kind of depends on how you have it set up. Um, whether you have them just giving you a final product or whether you just have them giving you the, creating the tools. Um, and the ones that were mentioned uh, that were developed, like you don't really have the ability to, you're able to add comments, but kind of not much more editing than that. Um, the analytical and viewing tools, um, you can have the contractor analyze it for you, kind of just give you that final report. Um, and then there was another one that had like the options of doing, you know, data queries, rudiment, win file creation tool, um, which I'm sure became very useful to have that contracted out to be made. So the pros, um, it can be highly customizable to your agency's needs, can save staff time by contracting out post-processing data as well um, versus just making the tool. For the cons, it can be expensive depending on what your needs are and the size of your network. Um, so if you, especially if you're having them kind of give you final reports and everything, it really is more helpful for a smaller network um, than a larger one because then your, your cost benefit is, is not as good once you get to a certain size. Um, the big thing was dealing with the procurement process and writing a scope of work for that uh, to be done. You really need to know what you want and need. Um, and then you also need a budget for that system maintenance over time. General comments, um, contracted database services, you know, can run that spectrum of uh, soup to nuts, doing the whole network and post-processing the data, getting that final product. Um, down to just um, kind of making a tool or something uh, for your database to be run by your staff internally. So I did a, um, in the survey, I did uh, several uh, from on a scale from one to 10, uh, one being very happy, thumbs up, smiley face, um, 10 being the angry, I don't ever want to go through this again, uh, what did my company do to me? Uh, so how, uh, first question was, how was the startup transitioning into the new system? A lot of people were talking about new systems that they used um, for, and that's pre pretty much going through insta installation, uh, importing existing data or historical data, and setting up your station so that you can start like importing data real time moving forward. Uh, so the stars on there are kind of what the scores were. If there were more than one agency, um, I just averaged the scores out. Um, one of the things that I noticed um, in this was that um, the Kister products, Hydro Whiskey, well, Whiskey and uh, Kai WQM, uh, those two, they didn't have a lot to respond to because they haven't gotten to that process. So there'll be a lot of NAs in the questions um, and the others, Hydra, the Oracle base and contracted were very um, kind of consistent and Aquarius really depended on how complicated your network was um, to as far as whether it was easy or hard. So um, it, kinda, it had a much larger range of answers of whether it was easy or hard. Um, I think that had a lot to do with how they were set up on expectations of the services or the database itself kind of before they got the product. Um, so I don't really want to read out numbers to you, but um, as far as uh, startup and transitioning, um, it was mostly middle ground, uh, kind of leaning towards angry for the uh, water quality module, the Kai WQM and the Oracle based um, it really helped have programmers, and the rest of them kind of ran really middle ground at five or six. Then how easy was it to maintain the data import after setup? Uh, Aquarius was kind of right out there at the front, so kind of once you got it set up, it worked really well to maintain 
um, your import processes. Um, and so everyone was kind of much happier with once you got it started and figured out what you were doing, you're much happier with it. Hydstra was still a little complicated. A lot of that had to do, I think, with the uh, station setup for new stations um, and kind of dealing with the different programming with it. Um, so how easy was it to QA and edit or adjust data after import? Um, kind of had a, a wide spectrum here, the Oracle based, not very good at all. With, um, it had very limited editing ability, especially if it was um, kind of pushing data out to other places. Um, Hydra was uh, down there, mostly because you could only do it one primary at a time. Um, and then Aquarius and contracted. Uh, was more up uh, in the happier range. How user friendly is it? Um, and I was actually pleasantly surprised to see most of them were on the happy side. Um, Hystra, a little less uh, user friendly. Um, if you're a programmer, it's a lot easier to understand um, than if you're a non techie, um, but you can still learn it. Uh, the Aquarius system seemed to be uh, kind of the easiest. Um, intuitively to like understand and I think the contracted was kind of there and the Oracle base because you it's more what you develop and tell them that you want so um, so did this product exceed match or fall short of your expectations so thumbs up is exceed uh, sideways thumb is it matched your expectations and the downward thumb is fall short of your expectations um, and so this it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how well the product works, but how well the vendor managed your expectations kind of going into the process. Um, if they were, you know, good about telling you like how good or bad kind of this process is going to be. So for the most part, um, everyone, it kind of matched um, their expectations for whiskey and Kai WQM. Uh, you have your fingers crossed because they're still in the process of uh, importing and getting it set up. Uh, Hydra tended to exceed expectations, and most of that was due to the amount of customer service you got um, from Kisters uh, to get things working and their responsiveness. Uh, for Aquarius and Oracle based, um, kind of it didn't, you know, kind of fell short uh, for a couple of people um, because it wasn't what they were expected or they weren't able to get it to the point that they wanted it to be with Oracle based stuff. So to kind of summarize this whole uh, chain, uh, kind of the database systems uh, from the comments that were made should really be based off of your organization's needs. Uh, there weren't a lot of people that wanted to be like, yes, this is the answer to everything. Um, it was much more like this one's good for this and that one's good for that. Uh, so you really need to know like what your needs are um, and, and look at that. Um, the process of transitioning goes a lot better if you know your data and what your IT requirements are before talking to vendors. So I, some IT um, want to only deal with cloud-based everything. Um, others like have different requirements from your IT department, so you really need to work with them when you're kind of looking at these uh, various options. And then uh, as far as the off-the-shelf products versus customized products, the off-the-shelf products are tend to be easier to set up. Updates are provided by the manufacturer, so you have that um, kind of service with it. Um, but you may have to sacrifice some of the functionality that you want. It's not as customizable to you because it's an off-the-shelf product. For, for the customized products, um, it, they're a little harder to set up because you have to go through that process of what do you want and can they do it and how much will it be? Um, it requires more maintenance on your end unless you have a like service or a maintenance plan with um, the vendor, um, but it can pretty much be designed to do whatever you need. It's very highly customizable to whatever your organization's needs are. And with that, I'll open it up to questions or discussions of anything that I may have missed. I don't think I will be able to answer many of the questions, but hopefully somebody else on the phone or will be able to do that. Oh, 
great. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, Darlene. Um, we had one question come through in the comments about if anyone has used any um, open source databases for this type of thing. Um, Post GRES was mentioned as one. Is is that something anyone has experience with? No, okay, I guess not. Um, so what other, um, I I had a, a, a couple questions um, to uh, get us started here. These are maybe for you, Darlene, or maybe just, you know, anyone else, just go ahead and answer if you know, or if this is kind of your thing, if you help make decisions about these kinds of systems. Um, I was curious, sort of what is most important in, like choosing one of these systems or um, implementing one or whatever, are are we looking mostly for like internal data storage and analysis, or are we looking? Is it more important to have um, some kind of external thing, something so people can look at the data? Or, I don't like what are the like big picture? What are the high level things that matter when trying to ch choose one of these things? Um, so this is Darlene. Um, in my opinion, I think it is transitioning from internal only. I think that's why you're seeing a lot of these web portal okay. options showing up. Um, and it's transitioning from being an internal storage thing to trying to make data available and as transparent as possible, kind of moving forward and easy, accessible, um, kind of real-time access to the data to the public. Okay. Okay. Good. So that that outward facing stuff is is pretty important. It seems like. Yeah, and I think it's getting more and more important, like okay. over time. Okay. Good to know. Thanks. Um, I I have one more question, Darlene. Is if you like if you implement one of these things is that is that like you or someone at the district sort of uploading data or is it like you hand a bunch of spreadsheets to the like hide stress support people what like what does it look like to implement this in terms of like getting data into something um to try to get it started i think it kind of depends on what uh, vendor you're working with on kind of the amount of support you get with like importing your data okay. um, and whether or not they have a tool available that you can use versus you hand them their your data and they import it for you and kind of like hand you uh, ready to go after a few months of working with your data is what right. it seemed like from the comments that I got and th those that are I haven't done a transition um, the database we use has been the database we've used since I got there. Um, okay. So I don't know really. Okay. Uh, so anyone who has that experience can speak up to that more than I could. Okay, great. Thanks. Hello. Uh, hi, this is Asmita again from the Southwest Florida Water Management District. Uh, we've transitioned from Hydra to Whiskey, and I would just like to mention on the transition process that Kisters has an application in Hydra called HITS XML, and that just creates XML files for you, which are readily, uh, which can be readily imported into Whiskey without making any changes. So if you were to move from Hydra to Whiskey, they already have a tool available. Hmm, great, okay, good to know, thanks. Sure. Um, this is Margaret Kroll from SwiftMud. Um, related to the uh, hi, our Hydra, our currently under underworks Hydra to Whiskey transition. When it comes to metadata, it's actually also fairly straightforward. Um, what we basically wind up doing, we're fortunate, I have to say, in that we're not starting from scratch. We're not, you know, we're not starting from um, basically a, a a bunch of Excel and text and CSV files on somebody's hard drive and trying to turn it into an environmental database. We we already have a system in place, although it it 
it was one of those Oracle based systems that got pretty grumpy faces and previous slides and those were well deserved. But um, but we also um, have uh, Hydra as an intermediate uh, system for QA, QCing the data. So we're moving our data from Hydra and our metadata is in the Oracle system though. And um, it's actually straightforward. It just consists of, of creating some importers in Whiskey um, by specifying the columns of data that you have. and um, and uploading CSV files into, you have to format it all ahead of time. You basically have to tell Whiskey what your screens are going to look like and make sure that you have a field for all of the values to, to be stored in. But once you've got the template set up, it's pretty easy. It just consists of uploading CSV files with your metadata for all of your data collection stations. So, uh, so far, so good. OK, great. Thanks. This Any is Margaret. Uh, okay. This is Margaret with Sig Bonds, Margaret Guyette. So um, this is uh, in addressing your last question, Dan. This is we bit we are one of the Aquarius users, and um, uh, we had uh, we had support from Aquatic Informatics to for the actual data migration because our our data had been housed in in Hydra. Um, and that process was relatively smooth. They just kind of took care of creating the time series and just moving the data over. And then in terms of kind of um, keeping things going as we moved forward, um, because all of those data are telemetered for us, um, so it's all coming in through servers, um, they also helped us set up the any files that we needed, which is similar to what happens in Hydra. Um, so now that's that's a really easy um, system for us to just be able to maintain ourselves. The challenging thing in Aquarius is actually getting the um, the discrete data, the field visit data in because it's really designed for hydrologic data. And so there isn't a really user friendly way of getting those data into the system. So we actually ended up working with IT staff to utilize a, a special XML format called HydroML that USGS developed to get our field da data visit or field visit data in. So it's it was not the smoothest thing in the world. It's a bit complicated. It, it works, um, but we're also um, trying to influence aquatic informatics regularly by giving them as much feedback as possible and suggesting, hey, could we please uh, could you please develop something that allows us to use something simple like a CSV format? And so they are working on those kinds of things. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Margaret. All right. Any other any other questions for Darlene or for anyone else on the line? Um, well, thanks so much, Darlene. And or can you send me your slides, and then I'll send them out to the whole group, and we'll also make this um, this video accessible for anyone who didn't uh, who couldn't sign on today. Um, yes, no problem. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone. We'll talk to you later.